Hey guys, so we finally made it into the new house. Um, we've been here for a few weeks now. The house needed quite a lot of work, so we've just been spending our time doing that. Um, it's quite an old cottage, so the floorboards and everything needed to be like needed um, kind of renovating and then painting and just so much stuff really. But I just wanted to show you the outside, um, so I'll just go to the front door. So this is actually the front door we use for the house um, because we're quite close to the road which I'm sure you can hear <laughs> um, we use this for um, our actual front door and then next to it we have this brick um, kind of outhouse which currently I'm trying to clear out and do up for putting our kiln um, which will be a temporary space before we show you it's a little bit full at the moment um, but yeah well, I'm hoping to get the kiln delivered next week so um, the idea is to have it in this building just for now until we build the studio space which I'll show you where that's going um, so this is the garden and the greenhouse where the Harry Potter aka my fiance Paul is um, doing loads of gardening and the idea is for this bits to be um, vegetable patches so that we can grow our own vegetables which we've always wanted to do it's just we've lived in big cities like London and Singapore that we've never had the space so having all this countryside is really a total dream um, and then so this is our garden and we also have this outhouse here which is quite run down which we need to do up but is good storage at the moment so we're going to be using this for storage and then all of my pottery gear is actually in the summer house um, which is a pretty good size actually I think I'm going to use this for storage and drying my pots once the studio is built but my stuff actually all fits in here um, not that you can actually use the space for anything just storage um, so yeah so this is inside I have all my glazes bisqueware and some pots I saved from when I was in Singapore and then also um, these are just more of my test pieces and then I have um, some more glaze up here and then my um, raw materials and then this is my wheel all tucked up ready to go so the idea until I actually get the studio is to um, set the wheel up in the kitchen which oh and this is all my clay yeah set the wheel up in the kitchen was really not ideal but will work temporarily until the studio gets built so I'll just show you that so the idea is to have so we want to keep the buildings that are already here so this one will once we do it up will be for storage and then I think I'm going to use that for drying pots and then I'm planning to have the studio around here so the this area here will be a little like seating area if you want to sit outside um, and it'll be big enough to be able to do classes and everything which I'm so excited about and then out here we have this like kind of random piece of land um, which I think would be hard if you didn't like if you didn't have anything in mind for what to do for this but the idea is so um, it's actually a triangle so it goes all the way back to there and then around here we're actually next to a farmer and then also surrounded by like protected woodland so we're actually never um, overlooked which is great and our big plans are to have some wood fired and pit fired and raku kilns in the future all the kilns like one step at a time but until then um, we're just going to work on clearing the space up setting the studio but hopefully there'll be some exciting classes coming your way um, so the idea is that people can come if they want to learn in person but I'll also do some online stuff for your folks that don't live in the UK. Um, yeah, I don't know if I mentioned we've moved to um, Bury St Edmunds which is in Suffolk in the UK. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'll do some videos of us setting up the studio and everything um, for you guys to see. But, 
was so excited. Um, yeah, the garden's so pretty. We've had a couple of barbecues here already, so that's very exciting, especially if, well, we've never had a garden, so this is a dream, really, dream come true. I'll just show you. Three weeks later. Later. Hey friends, um, so we've had a bit of delay of the studio getting built so until then we set up just a temporary space so that I can start working because it's been quite a while since I've actually done any pottery. We've been doing the house up, it's taken ages but it's pretty much almost there. So I'll show you the space we have um, put together just to get me by until the studio is ready. But it's actually looking really cute, so. So this is um, our front door, and we have this little courtyard bit. Uh, sorry, it's a bit of a mess. Um, but we have this cute little outhouse, so I've used this actually to set up the temporary studio. And um, I got these from Okinawa in Japan, so they're meant to ward, ward off, um, well, keep this one keeps good spirits in and this wards off bad spirits so I think they look really cute just in the um so you meant to like put them flanking your well your house or whatever but this is the studio so I'll take you in so this is my wheel and also my kiln fits in there very nicely um these smaller kilns are on wheels so you can actually pull them out because they can't be um, less than 25 centimeters on each side so when we pull it out it just fits real nicely so that's good and then I've also got space to put shelves above when it's not firing so I can put my wear boards with pottery um, on the different levels while I'm throwing which will be quite nice because I'll be throwing here so it means I can just slot them in as I make them um, yeah and then because I'm quite limited with space here I just use some space underneath um, because I prop my wheel up on these are on bricks so that I can throw standing up which is much better for my back so underneath I can actually have some space to put things so here um, all my wear boards some cloths and stuff and then these are just like little bits wax resist and stuff and then my banding wheel and scales for measuring out um, the weight uh, when I wedge up clay um, and also here I have all of my tools because I used to keep these in like tubs and boxes but um, I don't have space here for that so I was like hey I could use one of these these are for shoes and they're super cheap um, so I just got one of these and they actually fit all my tools really nicely um, so down here I've got more um, throwing so the stuff that's gonna get wet like my sponges and these are all my throwing bits and these are more for trimming and then for my Kurunuki carving clay stuff and then bigger stuff like paintbrushes and just like odd tools so I think that works really nicely so I haven't actually thrown yet I'm planning to throw today so I'll let you know how I get on and then also here I have my gauge from that's made by a dude called Samuel I'll put his link down below and then also hey <laughs> Um, this mirror because I just got because my last one broke and it means I can swivel it depending on you know what I'm throwing 
um, yeah so these are the shelves and so these are the wear boards I use I just cut down plywood to size and um, yeah they're ready to go um, what else yeah so also this is cute this is the studio I started pottery in they're called Fez Studio in Singapore so if you're in Singapore go hit these guys up they're sick um, and yeah they get they got me this photo as a leaving present so I can always see where this journey started um, yeah so I thought that'd be like a really nice place for it just while I'm throwing and just look over now and again and yeah that's it also I um so my idea is now that it's summer it's not too cold I have a sail that I can put up here if it's raining and also I just got a couple of fold up tables for doing can building and carving all my kuranuki stuff I can do out there and I also was wondering where, what to do about wedging clay so I asked um, Paul my fiance aka the Harry Potter um, to make up so this is just some plywood cut to size and he's attached it to the sawhorse so this folds down but it's actually really sturdy because I was thinking of wedging on this and it's not suitable at all and, it, and it's actually at a better height to wedge on and it means I can wedge on this my clay and then just fold it down so it's um, not in the way so yeah I thought that was quite cool so um, I'll let you know how I get on with that but yeah so I'm really excited to get started I'll just let you go I think I have a few orders for some dog bottles and then I'm gonna make loads of testers because I need to test the new kiln out um, on my glaze recipes so I'll do that and yeah I'll show you how I get on with the new setup and everything because it's much smaller than what I had before but it's only temporary until we get the studio built um, but still it's a bit you know you have to get used to a new space and that um, so I'll just show you where I actually keep all of my other stuff um, like just all of my literally other stuff like my glazes and my clay and that in this so in here so this is a little summer house and we got some kind of heavy duty shelves that, like just for the garage like kind of shelves for the garage and we just pop them in here so at the moment so this is going to be like my little reclaiming station so I'm gonna have my clay slop so I'm planning to use two clays this one I use more of so it's why I have bigger buckets and then this one um, I'm gonna put like my uh, like trimmed like dry stuff sorry clay I'm trimming off so it, I want it to dry out before I add it to the slops so that's why I've got two buckets there and then all these are my plaster bats so I can put clay slops here to dry out so the plaster soaks up the water from the clay and I've got a few because I um, just so I've got a few of these just so I'm not waiting because they can also get quite wet um, if you keep using them you need to let them dry out a bit so that they can like really suck the water out of the clay and then some of my clay I took or my scales the clay I took from my old place and then also some of the clay I don't use as much like the black clay um, and I think I probably actually will try to start using this clay up so it um, leaves a bit of space because I want to put my scales there these are pretty bulky so I'm saving these for the new studio I'm just using electric scales because I can't I don't want to like carry these back and forth and um, we got actually a huge delivery of clay because I'm always paranoid about like running out of clay and not being able to get any because the supply is a bit um, up and down so I have my little clay mountain here <laughs> so yeah this is loads of clay can't remember how much actually but yeah something like 40 bags I don't know um, yeah so that can sit out here it's fine for it to be out so yeah I have loads of clay so I'm not worried about that anymore and then oh, this is slowly filling up with rubbish um, so a huge compost pile and then the compost pile that was here before that we're making a dent in uh, so it's, it's taken a little while so sorry I haven't been 
yeah I've had to take a little break of like YouTube and everything but we're slowly getting there and hopefully very soon I'll start making tutorial videos and all that again in this new setup um, oh yeah I'll just show you that we've been also working on the garden so we've always wanted to grow veggies and stuff but we've never had the space so yeah we've got a couple of plots going the idea is to actually make all of this veg plots and actually this bit as well and then we want to set up some seating under the willow so we have lettuce and sprouts and then this is squash corn tomatoes chilies broccoli and cauliflower and it's so nice to see because we just moved in we don't kind of know what's here so it's nice to see all the plants like coming into bloom um oh yeah and then this is our more just herbs so these are perennials so we planted yeah what have we got, what have we got? fennel chives parsley mm, tarragon oregano mint rosemary artichoke and oh, what's this one I can't remember thyme maybe and then peas so yeah so I think I'm gonna make some next I'll be making some dog bowls so I'll show you that and also some test tiles just some real thrown test tiles to make sure my glazes are the same in this kiln as they were in my previous setup so I'll let you know how that goes a few moments later morning guys um, so I just thought I'd show you what I'm up to today um, so the kiln actually un under fired again it's under fired twice now um, the new kiln I've called her Tallulah yeah she's under fired like twice now so we're gonna adjust the program so increase the temperature a little probably by eight degrees um, eight degrees C and then also increase the whole time just so that the whole um, chamber gets up to temperature and I'm hoping that that will sort the problem if not we can also you know increase temperature again but I think it's best to do small in intervals um, while we're testing her so that's her second um, test firing so this will be her third and hopefully she gets up um, but yeah, I'll show you that in a sec. So, yeah, I was just actually going through yesterday, trying to remind myself of the glazes I have. This is one of my particular favourites, so. It's like a nice white, like icy white inside is really, it actually behaves really nicely on the um, this speckled clay. So I'm just gonna put these the ones, put these away. This one I totally love. So this is on a red clay and it's just gone such a beautiful, warm, um, kind of like brownie, orange, yellow colour. Looks like butt scotch or something. So nice. So I think this would be cool actually for like um, autumnal collections. Yeah, so this is where I've just, oh. so my testers are just living down here, and these are bisque fired testers as well, and my little glow at slip casting, which I'm hoping to do more of, um, yeah, so I forgot what I came in here for now, <laughs> um, yeah, I to pick up some bisque to test my, some of my glazes on for the, um, third firing, so I'm hoping it get up, gets up to temperature. I have named her Tallulah and she is a Rhoda Ecotop um, 45, no, 43 litre. And I'll show you inside. So these are just a few test wares I was doing. Um, and it's almost getting there. So this is a big bowl. What I'm going to do is the ones that all these wares that have underfired, I'll put through again just so that they get up to temperature properly. So I'll show you the cone. 
So this is cone four, five, six, and seven. So for you guys that don't know, these measure heat work and a more reliable test um, of firing temperatures than uh, what's on your controller. So you should always put these in your firings just to see if it's behaved as you expect. Um, so this we fired cone six and you can see it's getting to bend but hasn't quite got there. So yeah, we're gonna increase it. Like I said, we're gonna increase the temperature and increase the hold as well. Um, so I'll show you underneath. And um, this is the same set of cones. As you can see, cone six isn't bending as much as this other one. So you can see it's slightly um, lower temp down there, uh, which makes sense because the the um, probe is it is higher up. So that's what's actually measuring the temperature on your controller. Um, but I still, some of the glazes still are okay actually. This one, it's one of my favorite glazes. It's an opal glaze. Which is really lovely. This is the same one as well. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is unload that, reglaze those pieces and pop those in and then also where there's space pop in some of these guys so that they can refire. Um, so yeah, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, I might pop you down so you can see what's going on. I'll pop you on a glaze bucket. Sorry, just cut out. Um, so I use one of these um, hand blenders just to blend up my glazes that aren't such a big volume. So I have one left, one last thing to glaze. I, I just glazed that while the camera was charging. Um, so this one is Lynette's Opal from um, John Burt's Mid Range Firebook. This is just some water just to put it in and clean. So I usually leave quite a lot of the raw clay at the bottom. I just think it looks nice, especially with this clay. It's um, a nice, like, buff colour with speckles. I think I'll leave it there for this week. Um, I just want to say thanks, guys, for sticking with me because I haven't uploaded a video for a bit, for a while. Um, we were just moving house and everything. I just didn't have time. But now everything's getting kind of more sorted. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to upload like at least every month, maybe every two weeks. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to see anything specific from me, just leave it in the comments down below and I'll try to make um, a video for your suggestions. Um, thinking to do more like day in the life of what I do in a day um, in the pottery studio. And then also when like bigger things are happening, like when we get the studio built, I'll obviously like film that and more of my Kurenuki carving tutorials. But anyway, yeah, if you guys have suggestions, just leave them down below. Um, so anyway, until next time, bye!